Praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning to all. Good morning to all of you. Good morning to the Purpose family. Good morning. Praise God. Just trying to set up the Facebook live. It's a live with uh, still pictures, nevertheless. It's a devotion time. Praise God. Primrose Oliver here with you. It's devotion for this uh, Sunday, December 20, 2020. Trust you're doing well under God. Praise God. Amen. God is still our refuge and strength. Amen. A very present help in trouble. Hallelujah. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. All right. That's the scripture that we're going to share this morning. And then I quickly go into the continuation of what we had started with the power of fasting and prayer basic principle of prayer number two which is praying for all manner of need this morning bursting in my spirit was just these lines mm. oh, you are worthy to be praised I need to help I need to get Mr. Oliver to help me pitch it properly but in my spirit as home, you are worthy to be praised hallelujah I said oh glory to God Jesus you're worthy to be praised excuse the quality of my voice I just jumped up because I was like I needed to come and pray uh, around 6 o'clock and I wanted to just be serious about that the rains are upon us and perhaps praise God slept late a man I jumped up and realized that hey gotta get going with a devotion praise God hallelujah Remember, remember to send your comments and feedback and if you are in need of prayer, 876-868-5109. You can send us a direct mail, COG Radio J A at Gmail dot com. Psalm forty six says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, bless God, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, 
The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that God, He is God. He will be exalted among the heathen. He will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Good morning to my friend, live on Facebook, Mr. Prince Hall. How are you doing, sir? Special morning as well to all our friends logged in on Called Out Gospel Radio. Praise God. So many persons are here from Canada, and we bless the name of the Lord for you. Hollywood is here. God bless your heart. Praise God. Other places in the U.S., persons are here from there. Hallelujah. Jamaica, you're live as well. God bless you. Praise God. Let's get right into it. It's five minutes after seven o'clock. And we have been exploring the book on the power of prayer and fasting. In our world today, more than ever, is the need for one to develop a culture develop a culture of prayer and fasting in a world of uncertainty but God says still be still God is still saying still be still and know that he is God He's a God that needs a good crisis. He doesn't even need a good crisis. But he will take a crisis and still exalt himself. He will still get the glory therein. So we have been examining the book, The Power of Prayer and Fasting. 21 Days That Can Change Your Life by Marilyn Hickey. Praise God. And uh, we started the chapter on the 10 principles of prayer last devotion we had together praise God so on Friday morning as remember Mr. Oliver we're trying to just do it interchangeably yeah Mr. Oliver had a powerful devotion yesterday morning on praise amen Praise God. Give God thanks for him. Amen. On Friday, we spoke about principle number one. Where one was encouraged to pray frequently. Without ceasing. Amen. And we spoke about creating a habitat of prayer, an environment 
developing a culture of praying that it doesn't appear that you are coerced into doing it. It's a bother. It's boring. That culture of prayer. Hallelujah. That it became a part of you. It became a habit. It became so natural to you. There are times you would have been nudged into doing it. An alarm clock. You know, the body can be an alarm clock at times. Your body would have been nudged into go pray, go pray. It's time to pray. So, so I hope I can upload that uh, audio. I didn't get to post that devotional. So I don't want to go over it, but I want to move on to principle number two. Father, we ask that as we share with the Purpose family this morning, that God, you will inspire, that you, God, will give me the words that I ought to speak. Hallelujah. That Jesus, whatever we do this morning, you will get the glory from what we are doing. Let there be clarity. Hallelujah. Let there be soundness in the words being shared. That your peace will enter the hearts of your people. Even as, God, we open our hearts, even as you open our hearts. To take in what? you want Primrose to share this morning for I'm but a conduit God I'm but a failure just because of you only in your strength am I able to go forth so bless and do good bless all purpose family listening right now those who will listen praise God in Jesus name Principle number two, pray for all manner of need. Marilyn Hickey starts the clause by saying, the, pre- the Bible encourages us to pray for all things that we perceive we need. James 1, or rather James 4, 2. She quotes it and, and, and says, Ye have not because ye ask not. Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm going to check out that scripture to see if it, if it is this short because it is so succinct. It's very clear. You have not because you ask not. Let's check it out. James 4 verse 2. Can you find it? Amen. giving honor to the Holy Spirit to the mighty God he is indeed worthy greeting the purpose team Mr. Derville Oliver Ms. Prudence Barrett the children and of course to all of you We thank God for all of you. So, I am looking at this verse. Praise, praise God. And the verse in its entirety says... Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. 
I'm glad that the verse is quite simple. Amen. It's very, very, very simple. It's not complex. It's straightforward. Praise God. If I don't ask you for help, you won't need, I need, you won't know I need help. Amen. So, the scripture, God through the scripture is encouraging us to pray for all manner of need. Amen. There's something that you desire, ask him. Amen. Say going around asking everybody, principal, uh, scripture said putting your confidence in man putting your confidence in princes and, and yeah sometimes we tend to do that sometimes we'll ask a friend for help sometimes they will disappoint us uh, that sort of thing a man of flesh I mean it happens but he says he ask he have not because he ask not so we are failing are we failing to ask of God yeah, many times because we tend to just speak we just speak lightly but I'm afraid anyone will say so and so and so and so but did we go to God about it? we have to remember he's our maker we were created to worship. We got to go back to the source. Amen. Even in our radiothon that we are doing, it continues on Monday, started Thursday, continue on Monday, continues on Monday, ends on Thursday coming, God's willing. We ask, but we have to first ask God, help us. We don't want to leave God out. And God is saying, watch them. Look at them. They go on about asking. They don't know I am. I am. I am that I am. God is saying that. They don't know. I am the one that put it in the heart of somebody to bless you. I God. God is saying I put it in the mind of somebody. Your need. Hallelujah. You ever wonder sometimes people would know what you need and you didn't tell them? <laughs> Nobody told them. But they just call you up and they say, Do you need such and such? They didn't even ask what you need. They say, Do you need so and so? And did you ask of God so and so? I have it for you. My God. Oh Lord, have mercy. It's a prayer seasoned with faith does powerful things amen not to mention fasting so let's continue God encourages his people Marilyn Hickey says in this beautiful book ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possessions it says possession Psalm 2 8 oh Lord have mercy I, I've got to go to it because I, I want to see it you know many times we say seeing is believing amen unless we see it we, we don't believe it well the Bible still says blessed are those <laughs> that you don't have to see to believe amen praise God hallelujah since the scripture is provided, let's see it. We want to see if there's any clause we left out. Amen. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessings on the outside. What's the weather like where you are? Praise God. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. 
But for all the showers we play. And here we are praying. Here we are talking about praying for all manner of need. And God is showering us with his blessings. Amen. Hallelujah. So Psalm 2 verse 8 says, Ask of me, the King James Version, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. This sounds quite familiar. Like a verse someone encouraged me to read some time ago. Woman of Purpose, Missionary Sonia Mitchell. I'm sure this is the verse she taught me about. You know you can be reading something and in your mind is a click. Because you say, but this sounds familiar. It looks familiar. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. Oh my God. What a declaration. What a declaration. Somebody. The Bible. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus have mercy. Where can this... Where such verse comes from, it must be the belly of God. It must be from God. The Bible encapsulates everything here stored up so beautifully for the child of God it encapsulates oh hallelujah what God has in store for his people if we ask come on somebody need to start asking today Mm -hmm. I know you've been asking sometimes but another scripture says we ask because we we, we're asking amiss so so it's not on target so there must be a target even in asking and anything that you're doing there must be some focus there must be some target amen so yeah we ask but you know sometimes you can't be talking something but it's not coming from the heart now that's another discussion for another day why do we ask a miss and what does God speak of when he says we ask a miss but I'm focusing directly on this verse referred here by Marilyn Hickey in this book, The Power of Prayer and Fasting. And we are talking about basic principle number two, pray for all manner of need. And here is this nugget. Oh my God, of surprise. It's beautiful. Psalm 2 verse 8 says, Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth, oh my goodness, for thy possession. Somebody just let that sink in. Somebody let that sink in. I'm seeing my friends locked down. I'm going to go very shortly to our friends over there in Croydon, UK. Praise God. God bless you, my friend. Luz Nelly Diaz. Praise God. God bless your heart. Mr. Dervil Oliver, God bless you. Woman of Purpose, Shea Simona Sewell. God bless your heart. This nugget here. Mm, I love it. I gotta go because I need to wrap this up soon. Jesus, have mercy. I have to read it again. Come on, somebody say, read it again. Read it again. Get it in your spirit. Read it again. Meditate on it. Write it down in a journal. Highlight it. In your spirit. Read it again. 
ask of me ask of me and i god shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance i wonder if i need to break down the words for us to understand the power that's within this verse oh my goodness the heathen did god say the heathen yes he did for thine inheritance Oh my goodness let us look at the meaning of inheritance to realize the power that's in this verse my god my god says we are destroyed because of lack of, lack of knowledge we are not so knowledgeable about his word and that's why we fail but he has given us the key and it's his very word come on somebody say amen somebody say amen inheritance cuz sometimes we know these words and they appear very simple and we take them so lightly so we say all right uh, you know inheritance but do we really understand what it means the meaning i he I, i googled quickly something that is or may be inherited let me go further Meaning number 2 says the act of inheriting property B the reception of genetic qualities by transmission from parent to offspring the acquisition C says the acquisition of a possession condition or trait from past generations lord have mercy help me mm. but i like so beautifully the the i like this one the the, the B, number b letter b the reception of genetic qualities by transmission from parent to offspring oh my lord are we talking when we talk about property here we are talking inheriting something from god ask of me god says and i shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession for yourself god says he will give you the uttermost parts of the earth oh hallelujah possess it hallelujah hallelujah lord have mercy he will give you it for keeps mm God is a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. Somebody sing that song for me. Somebody sing it. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Lord have mercy. That's the song we're closing out with. But you got to come over to Call Out Gospel Radio for me to play it because I don't want it flagged. on Facebook or on YouTube when I put it up on YouTube later Somebody hope op- open your spirit and sing it open your mouth and sing it in your atmosphere that God is the God that gives hallelujah he's the he's the source for anything you need as he reminds us to pray for all matter all manner of need all he didn't say some all What do you need up today? He says pray for all manner of need. Here we are. Seemingly boxed in by corona virus. And God would have what have allowed us different avenues for us to connect. Call dot gospel radio, Facebook, YouTube, Zoom. All these different platforms, all these different methods. of connecting together that is god creating a way of escape for seemingly we are locked down but god still creates a way that we can connect hallelujah he knows how important it is to fellowship he knows how important it is for us to get together He says forsaking not the assembly and there's still nothing like getting together 
in an assembly, getting together in a place of worship. There's still just nothing like that. There's something also special about that. But while the, the law says, or the, the powers that be say, that we are to stay at home, hallelujah, he's created all these different platforms that when we connect, you can still feel God in us just talking with each other, praying, fellowshipping with each other. That's the universal goodness of God. That's God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That God, you have provided an oasis even in the midst of a crisis. For many, God, are depressed. Many God are anxious. Many God don't know what the next move is. But God, you provide a way of escape. Somebody say, I lost my job. I don't know how I'm going to pay the bill. The bank still call me. The bank still calls me. There's somebody I owe. And they still want their money. Oh God. But here comes God providing for his people in the midst of a crisis. You're talking about the great Jehovah God, Jehovah Jireh, the Alpha and Omega. He provides in the desert place. He provides in Corona. Listen, Corona, you have nothing on God. He just awaits for the right time to say, move on, Corona. But even in the midst of the Corona, he is testing us to say, are we still worshiping? Are we still bringing all gift to the altar in a genuine way? Do we really mean God when we say God are we really genuine about our worship are we really genuine about our prayer are we really genuine about all need when we ask of him where is it coming from is it coming from the mouth or is it coming from the heart I gotta go I gotta wrap up this quickly oh God the piano is playing now and Mr. Oliver will soon give me an instrumental. We're working on something to give you to include in our devotionals. So Mr. Derville Oliver. This instrumental Max Medica is now playing, strumming beautifully on the keyboard. I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you. Hmm, hallelujah. Somebody has seen that. I'm coming back. To the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord For the things I've made it It's all about you It's all about you even in Corona, it's all about you. For forgive me for just going on like everything is the same. For forgive me for just turning on the TV set and getting fellowship with TV partners, whomever they are. Just sitting down and getting the movies on and just knowing more movies than ever. Because here is a space for me to watch as many movies as I can watch. And I could do what I want to do so much more. Now I don't have to go anywhere. I just could. But oh, he's still saying, come to me. Come back. Come back. Come back. I'm calling you to a higher place of praise. I'm calling you to a higher place of worship. He's still saying he needs his people. He needs his people. I mean, he could do without us, yeah, but he created us to worship and he's still giving us a chance, a window of opportunity to come to me, worship me from your heart. Come to me for all manner of need. So wherever you are now across the world, whatever it is that you need of God, he says, ask me, ask God. And he, God, will give you the desires of your heart. Let's wrap this up. Marilyn Hickey continues beautifully in this, in this book. 
the people of God throughout the Bible asked God for all manner of provision. They asked him for protection and deliverance from their enemies. As I read that last line, I, I recall the man of God and the Bible who when he got that evil report he placed the letter on the altar of God I believe it was Jehoshaphat praise God place it before the Lord Put whatever it is, put bleed out. Come on, some of us need to be prostrate. I'm not gonna eat for day. I, I'm not gonna eat until God speaks to me. Come, my belly's not my God. Some of us need to just I lock away, shut in. God wants that from us. She concludes by saying, for principle number two under the principle of prayer that's a topic we're under they asked him for wisdom and she's speaking of the people of God throughout the Bible and she's encouraging us to do same asking God for wisdom courage discernment guidance and insight into the Bible uh, they asked him for healing of spirit mind and body Oh God, we asking the doctor, but hello. Sometimes God works to the doctor. Hello. Sometimes God don't need a doctor. He is the great physician. Come on, somebody. Healing of the mind, body, soul, and spirit. Corona want to come and depress a lot of people. Come on, Corona want to come and cause a lot of fear and uncertainty. Oh, but God's fountain of healing God's fountain of healing is flowing flowing still in the atmosphere of anybody who wants to take the time out to pray take the time out to ask oh Lord have mercy last sentence here says Jesus told his disciples that if they asked for anything in his name he, he would do it Lord have mercy that's the concluding scripture this morning and let's turn to it quickly as we wrap it up oh have mercy on us Jesus for knowledge of your word enlightens the soul knowledge of your word enlightens the spirit my God oh Lord Jesus ay 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 Said John 14, verse 14. Come on, I want to see it directly from this. To see if we have left off anything. Come on, begin to ask wherever you are. Begin to pour out. Yeah. Let's repent first. So, yeah, repent of every sin. No, 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 no. Clean up our hearts. Ask God to clean us up and then we go in. Sometimes we're praying and the first thing we go, Lord, I ask you that you, God wants you to first come to me. When you come, you repent and you start to worship. You get into this worship thing. You get into a, a habit of worship. Allah, how are you worshiping? Uh, all right, if you don't have the time, even five minutes, you start just worshiping before you're even going into asking. You are worshiping God, letting him know, oh, how great he is. As I jumped on St. John 14, I see verse 1. Oh, I remember one day I was just walking. I don't know what my mind was on, and there was somebody in a supermarket wherever I went 
He said, God says to tell you, let not your heart be troubled. That alone, that day, there's nothing that could have happened to make me sad or upset. Somebody out of the blue just said, God said to tell you, my daughter, let not your heart be troubled. That's for another day. I just wanted to remind you about that. <laughs> Let's look at verse 14. Verse 14 of chapter 14. If ye shall ask anything in my name. What's that name? The name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. I will do it. Not primrose now. God says he will do it. Somebody need to start writing. Somebody need to start writing it down. All the things that you need of God. Come on. Come on. Come on. But first thank him. Thank him for all the things he's brought you through. Come on. Thank him for all the things he's brought you through. And then go in. Put it before God. All your manner of need. God we thank you this morning. For your inspiration. We thank you for your word. Your words of wisdom, we thank you. Your words of knowledge, everything that God you've poured in. To your servant this morning, to your people this morning, God, we want to thank you for your words. Hallelujah. That continue to be a light unto a path. A lamp unto our feet and a light unto a path. The entrance of thy word. Give it, light and, give it light and understanding. That's what your word says. And so we thank you. Hallelujah. For the door of opportunity. The window of opportunity. The opportunity we have God to say. I, I told you to ask. Ask, 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 ask. Hallelujah. We thank you today. That Jesus your God. That still shows up in all our circumstances. All our circumstances, all our situations, you still are a God that has not left us alone. Hallelujah. Thank you for that reminder today that we ought to pray. It's a basic principle, a prayer. Hallelujah. As we pray frequently, we ask for all manner of need. God, take away pride. Take away every hindrance. Whatever the hindrances are, whatever the encumbrances are, Whatever the incumbrances are that continue to bar us from asking on target, God, remove in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we ask that God, as your words filter through our spirits, that God, we will do whatever you want us to do, that God, we will reap the benefits that are there for the child of God, the inheritance that is there for the child of God. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you today for our godly inheritance. Have your sweet way in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen.